what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's so much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Good morning, and welcome to On the Waterfront with me. I'm Melinda Moulton, your host, and my guests today are Elise Greaves and Shane Rogers, who are the co-directors of the New Leaders Council of Vermont and graduates of the first ever Vermont New Leaders Council Institute of 2019. Elise and Shane, thank you for joining me today. Good morning, Melinda. Thank you for having us on. Thanks, Hi. Melinda. Can't wait. Yeah, this is really exciting. Um, so I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about about the two of you and what brought you to the work of of your social justice and uh, the really proactive activism work that you have been doing in in your young lives. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you, Elise, um, to share with me a little bit. You were with Rights and Democracy. We were involved in the in the fabulous Women's March that shut down the interstate back in 2017. I mean, what a highlight of our lives, right? Absolutely. It took me 70 years to have a moment like that. So talk a little bit, Elise. We'll start with you about what brought you to this work. Who inspired you? Uh, what keeps you, What keeps you going every day after day? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, when I talk about my personal story, I often um, start with the with the fact that I was born and raised in Hardwick, Vermont, um, which is a small town in the Northeast Kingdom, um, and I grew up in a in a working class family. Um, and I and I realized um, as I got older, I was the first person in my family to graduate from college. Um, that a lot of the issues um, and the rhetoric that is happening or was happening at a national level, um, especially around like the Occupy movement um, at that time when I was in college, um, really helped open my eyes to see that a lot of the experiences, right, that I had as a child, a lot of the tensions and stress around, um, you know, money um, and, the injustice of that and just uh, the scope of economic injustice across the state and across the country um, really lit a fire in me. Um, and I remember it was one of the first times um, that I really felt that was actually seeing uh, Senator Bernie Sanders speak at UVM when I was a sophomore. Um, and that for me, that was during Occupy again. And I feel like that really changed the trajectory of, of what I wanted to do with my life and what kind of change I wanted to make. Um, and so I uh, got a degree um, to be a social studies teacher um, in high school, um, thinking that that would be sort of my path to making that change. Um, and after college, um, I got a job with the organization Rights and Democracy, as you mentioned, Melinda, um, where I worked for four years as an organizer. Um, I started out there as a canvasser around um, getting paid sick days for every Vermonter um, and also raising the wage to $15 an hour. Um, and so that for me, you know, just knocking on doors all over the state, um, connecting with folks who have real lived experience of the issues that we're fighting for um, and building and developing them to like come and give testimony um, in front of the legislature and, um, you know, come to organizing meetings and sort of like organize their neighbors around these issues um, was incredibly powerful. Um, and as you mentioned as well, um, I can't really talk about my leadership trajectory without talking about Melinda Moulton and the, and the Women's March on Montpelier. Um, I remember distinctly, and I think about this sometimes, um, you know, there were a lot of people in my life, um, especially, um, you know, in college and, and in my work in rights and democracy that um, I felt were really invested in my leadership. And I think that that's really important that folks have mentors and people who are lifting them up and supporting them. Um, and I distinctly remember one of the first Women's March meetings, uh, I had already kind of applied for the permit because it was in November and, you know, <clears throat> we needed to get that stuff squared away. Um, and I remember Melinda saying, well, I really think, you know, whoever took the initiative to apply for the permit should sort of be our point person and sort of lead the charge on this. Um, and so that's, you know, how that happened. And I have Melinda to thank, you know, I think in a lot of ways for my growth in that experience and also just, um, yeah, putting on the 
one of the coolest events in Vermont's history. So um, that's me and I'll pass it over to Shane. Shane, tell us your story, my friend. Well, I wish I was as impressive as Elise Screams, but I, the one thing that I have going for me is that I do get to work with her just about every day. But I actually grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and I have decided to make Vermont my home over these past seven years here with my partner. And uh, similar to Elise, I grew up in a working class family. I helped my dad work construction in the summers over high school. I worked my summers throughout college to be able to, you know, have the money that I needed to exist in college. And during college was really, I really like dove into activism. You know, I started um, around the Occupy movement, but also there was a U.S. Uncut movement where uh, we really dove in about corporations not paying their fair share and how honestly, if they just paid their taxes, we wouldn't really have much of the financial problems that we're, we're paying. And that was my first taste in college in Dayton, Ohio, of bringing together a community of folks that I you know, weren't interacting with every day. We had about 30 folks show up on tax day outside of the post office. And it was really wonderful to be in that community. And from there, it inspired me to jump into organizing full time after college. I had also pursued a degree in journalism. So as you know, wayward kids do after college, I meandered my way back to Cleveland, where I was bartending full time and writing part time and went down to Washington, DC to write and really had that like light bulb moment of, you know, do I really want to be part of the impartial press or do I want to be using these skills towards building something that I can be proud of? And food had crept into my life in this way that, of course, I would land in Vermont in the Northeast Kingdom at Green Mountain Farm to School because there's no better place to be. And it was up there that I think I came into my own uh, getting involved with organizing, that's where I met Elise, was uh, helping on a state representative campaign and really organizing the community in Newport. And I love Vermont for the fact that everything feels very accessible when you get down to it. But as I started diving in more and more, you can just see these inequities popping up. And I think that's what led me here to this moment, right? To working with the Leafs through New Leaders Council is as I moved out of the Northeast Kingdom, I was really looking for a place to get involved and where I could put my talents outside of work and roadblock after roadblock were being popped up. And then as New Leaders Council popped up, it really promised a community of young folks who were maybe experiencing the same thing and are on their journey. And going through that first institute was, an eye opener. You know, we instantly almost like all fell in love with each other as friends and knew that we could rely on each other. And when the opportunity came up to help direct it into the next year and the year after, you know, it was a real gift to be able to work with Elise in uh, helping to steward the organization to where it is now. And I'll just say, you know, if it wasn't for NLC Vermont, I don't know if I would have uh, that community, but also those skills. Uh, to do the work that I'm also doing outside of it, just different organizing throughout it and to really trying to build this youthful base of leadership and really highlighting that you don't need to come from money or traditional realms of leadership to step into a role. And to be honest, that's not where the solutions are going to come from anyway, as I think we all know. Wow. The two of you, what a force you make. Pew. And still mostly Elise, Melinda. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I think the that's not true. Right. Um, so you you came together when you were in the class, uh, when you took when you when you were in the first ever uh, institute in 2019, which is only a couple of years ago, and that's where you met. Was there a was there 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 must have been a Vermont new leaders council for you to be part of who was leading it back then was it give me a little bit about tell me a little bit about the history of the organization um and how you got the role of being the co-directors and what was it when you first took the class yeah um so yes the organization um our our cohort which was the first went through in 2019 um and so before that um eric covey um who um 
you might know Melinda, um, but he had previously uh, co-directed and helped found um, the main chapter of New Leaders Council. Um, and he came back to Vermont um, doing some organizing work and decided that Vermont was, um, you know, kind of an ideal place to have this type of organization um, that's lifting up young people into positions of leadership and giving them the skills to lead in their communities. Um, and so, you know, he built it from the ground up um, really uh, by himself, which is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, and yeah, we were part of the first institute. Um, and essentially, uh, the transition, so it's um, apparently very rare we hear from our colleagues at the national level for um, first time, you know, cohort graduates uh, to take over as, as co-directors, but Shane and I were just really excited uh, when this opportunity popped up because um, I think that we shared a, a vision of like where we wanted to go and what we wanted to build. Um, and here we are. And I, I think one of the most exciting things to us, too, is that vision was shared among our cohort. And we may be like the directors right now, but without our cohort and without the board uh, filled with other cohort members and other folks from the community, I'd also wouldn't be what it is today. You know, it wouldn't be training <clears throat> one of the most like diverse classes throughout Vermont and really providing these skills. So it. it it still amazes me having some of these meetings when you're talking with folks and all these visions just coming together and like shooting off in the same direction. It's, it's pretty wonderful uh, to be able to live through uh, those ideals. Well, to be le it's really a movement. I mean, the new leaders council is really a movement where you're, where, where, I mean, if I, I mean, I'm going to try to get this right, where you're basically saying it's time for our generation of young people to step up into leadership roles and to, and, and to start guiding our world in a direction that, that focuses on all the really important things that are gonna keep humanity alive and equitable and fair and honest and um, healthy and strong and uh, facing the light of justice and equality. I mean, that's what, that's what you're doing as a, now it's a national organization, so um, let's talk about that. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the national organization. How many states is in? How many people? How many people go through the training every year? And then we'll move in a little bit to the local to the localism of your organization that the two of you are running. Sure. I think one of the most unique parts about NLC is that it is a national organization. So. We have this chapter here in Vermont, but there's 50 other chapters around the country that are doing similar work. But what I think is most important is every chapter is rooted in their community and they are meeting the needs of their community for how leadership needs to show up and how young folks need to be trained. So there's thousands of people who are going through the Institute each year. Each chapter has anywhere from 12 to 15 people. There is a common curriculum, but one of the coolest things about it is that we get to intersperse folks from Vermont to help guide how we are learning, how fellows are interacting, and really help them ground the work that they're doing, which, you know, mostly is most important, I think, because it gives them space to carve out, to think about these things in all these high demanding <laughs> time crunches that we have. But it gets them to ground their work right in Vermont to make sure that Vermont is the type of state that we all know it can be and that we all have to work towards it. So let's, let's talk a little bit to our viewers about the program. And by the way, to my viewers out there, I want to take you to the website. Uh, you're going to go to the national website uh, and you'll notice on that website, there is a donate button. And this organization is run by donations from all of us. No donation is too small. It is the new leaderscouncil.org and you go to that website it's a fabulous website that really explains what this organization does in bringing young leaders uh, into the fold um so let's talk about not to our viewers about about the program and how would how would our viewers get involved in the program uh what is the program like could you share a little bit about that with our viewers 
Absolutely. Um, so at its core, uh, New Leaders Council is a, is a training program. Um, our hallmark is actually what we call the Institute. Um, and so that's a six month, um, pretty intensive training program that runs from January to June each year. Um, and our fellows, um, they're usually, you know, like 12 to 16 folks um, who are brought together during this institute um, for both hard skills training um, and also, um, you know, one of my favorite pieces of New Leaders Council to really build um, deep connections and relationships with other folks in their cohort um, that are going to be there to support them um, in, you know, other aspects of their life and the work that they're doing in their communities after the cohort is wrapped up. Um, and that's certainly something that we see um, with different cohorts every year. Um, and really our goal is to bring people together, Shane mentioned this before, but from outside of traditional realms of leadership. Um, and really uh, our goal is to challenge, right, what, what the idea of a leader is um, and what that can look like. Um, and to challenge one another, one another to really stir progressive change and connect around our common values. Um, and at the end of the day, really build collective power to create this change um, that we want to see in our communities. Um, and so we've really been working um, through the Institute um, and again through the um, connections that folks make. Um, we want to energize um, the fellows that we work with to really evaluate and reimagine systems and structures that are in place. Um, and so we really encourage, you know, like a lot of people to come into New Leaders Council have like a, an issue that they love and are incredibly passionate about. Um, and I think that having sort of like this melting pot of issues and backgrounds and um, even, you know, as far as sectors of, of where people work and what sort of work they're doing um, is incredibly helpful for this conversation about how we can be changing systems and how we're all impacted by one another. So I have a question about age. Um, I have a question about how our viewers, if they would want to get involved in the organization and do and do the do the training program, um, how would they how would they get involved? How do they participate? The best way to participate, <clears throat> especially for younger folks, right? Like think like. 23, 24, all the way up to like 35, 36, 37. And those age ranges are, are squishy anyway, because we're not sitting here trying to be prescriptive of who considers themselves a young leader or not. But uh, we have a nomination process. So there are people in the community that can nominate people that they think would be really good fit for this. Uh, you can nominate yourself and submit an application. And the process works like you know, how you would imagine it, right? You answer some questions, you go through some interviews and talk with us, and then really the background and the board helps to decide, you know, what this cohort is going to look like. But I think most importantly about that is that while not everybody is going to get into the cohort, we're really not trying to set up this like competitive cutthroat type of environment. And we really want this to be about building community. And just because someone may not get into the cohort one year, uh, we want them to have that positive experience so they can come back and keep applying. And what we are hoping is that with our process that we can really continue to build a community throughout Vermont. So tell me a little bit about after you go through the program, what how, do you stay, you must stay in touch with all of these new leaders. There must be a program to, because it's a six month program and then they leave the program and go back into their into their worlds with all of this knowledge to be able to create the change. The two of you ended up actually leading this organization. That was where you landed after your training. Um, so tell me a little bit, tell me some of the stories about people who have graduated from the program and some of the things that they, they are doing. Yeah, so one, um aspect of the program um, is what we call a, a capstone project, um, which is a really cool and, and really unique um, opportunity for folks who go through the program and fellows um, to carve out some space and time in their lives and, and through the program um, to really think about um, a project, right, that they want to plan or something that they want to put in place um, and really get those details nailed down with support from their colleagues and other fellows in the program. Um, and so certainly um, that 
and the teamwork that comes out of that and the support that they offer each other is certainly like one way um, that folks remain connected um, and continue to do great work, even if it's not related to New Leaders Council after the program. Um, for example, we, we had um, a fellow from last year and actually um, somebody on our board whose capstone project, right, was like to apply to grad school. And so um, that process looked like uh, interviewing other folks who had experience doing those applications in the cohort um, and getting, you know, support and accountability from peers. Um, and then he actually uh, is going to grad school now. Um, he starts in the fall, which is um, very exciting. Um, so that's one example of, um, you know, what, what folks take from the program. Um, and I'll also say that we, um, as a board, are made up of all, we are all graduates of the program um, from across cohorts. And so joining the board um, is also another really great way to stay connected. And as Shane mentioned earlier, um, we really wanna be incorporating, right? Like a collective vision and um, thoughts and insight and feedback from, from everybody who goes through the program. I mean, NLC really is the people that, that make it and that are involved. Um, and so we wanna create space for that. Um, so we, we certainly encourage people joining the board and staying connected in that way as well. And I'm gonna have to add here, so like Elise going through our year, her capstone was to you know, discover the career that she wanted to be pursuing for the next couple of years. And lo and behold, she's like, what, two years into um, a new job? And I think why I say that is because NLC gives us some time to carve out space right? Like that's, that's one of the biggest goals. We have someone in this cohort who is thinking about a career change. We have people who want to run for office. We have people who want to start animal shelters. And all of this is towards like kind of building this like progressive ecology of good in our, in our community. And with the demands of today, with always being connected, we don't always give ourselves a moment to take a step back and say, what do I want? What is this grounded in? What ideals do I want to pursue? And we really want NLC Vermont to be that place for folks. And we want that to then be taken into the community for those ideals to live through their work in nonprofits or for profits and through their other boards as well. We want to emulate what it means to actually be a progressive community minded organization and to be held up to that, not only that expectation, but to really shine through that expectation as well. I sort of feel that it's kind of like the next the next iteration, it's the next generation of of socially responsible humanity coming through the lens of of the youth. Yeah. Uh, right? I mean what at what point, right? Like we have there's gonna be a transfer of power. There has to be. And we're, we're dying off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to put it like that, I guess we can, yeah. but like there has to be that transfer of power and we need folks that aren't coming from those traditional realms of power structures to be able to actually have creative ideas and have the space to explore them. And mm -hmm. NLC Vermont provides some of that platform. It's not the, it's not the end all be all solution, but it is definitely one of those steps in the right direction. And we hope other organizations will, you know, emulate it, but also work towards what we're working towards too. And that's why we build these relationships in the community with our cohort and with the different organizations too. So for my viewers out there, is there, um, if they want to nominate someone or nominate themselves, um, is, there, is there a cost to this program? Yeah, so the Institute is actually offered for free. Um, so that is one of the ways that New Leaders Council really shows up um, in an equitable way um, across the country for folks to access it. Um, there is a $35 application fee. Um, application fees, uh, can be uh, waived if that presents a barrier to applying. Um, and you can just reach out to Shane and I about that. Um, and applications actually open on Saturday, on May 1st. Um, so a little bit earlier this year. Um, and so that's exciting if, if folks are interested in applying. Um, nominations are free. It's totally free to nominate somebody. Um, and you know, as someone who was nominated for the cohort, I can tell you that uh, it feels really good to be nominated and to, to have someone showing up to say, you know, this person, I believe in you and um, I think that you'd be a good fit for this program. And um, 
So, you know, the, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Shane, go ahead. I just, and I would say as someone who wasn't nominated, we encourage folks to, to jump in and apply themselves too. If you, if you're seeking this out, and this is for all of Vermont, this isn't a Chittenden County thing. We have, we have fellows from all over the state and we really want to build that collective identity as well. And the, and the way to do that is to go to the website, which is newleaderscouncil.org, right? And you'll find a place to apply. Uh, you'll note that it's in Vermont. I'll have to note that. And also you can make a donation. And I'm going to say this again because the program is free, uh, except for that $35 application fee. So for any of my viewers out there that want to support this incredible organization that is helping to to bring uh, young people into leadership, to move our world towards a cleaner environment, more social justice, equity, uh, racial justice. This is a place where this can happen. And so if you care about those issues, making a small donation to the New Leaders Council um, would be a wonderful thing to do. No donation is too small. So I wanna know from the two of you, what, um, what are the hopes for your future, for the future of this organization? And also, if you could share with me before we leave each other, uh, what is the lesson that you've learned from the last uh, 18 months of dealing with COVID? What is, what is something that's, that's come into your heart that you've learned from? And then also share with me a little bit about the future that you see for the next four or five, 10 years for the New Leaders Council. She's putting us on record, at least, so she can yeah. <laughs> look back to this and see <laughs> what, what ends up coming to fruition. Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess looking looking forward um, for new leaders council, um, one of the things that feels really important to me is um, increasing our reach and, and not for the sake of like saying that we've hit every place in Vermont, um, but because there are young people, um, there are needs in communities all across the state. Um, and so it feels important to me that we're getting into those communities and that people are, are taking the skills that they learn and, and coming back and doing the work to make it, you know, a stronger, better place for everybody. So Elise, what did you, what did you, what did you, what have you, what is the one thing that you've, that you've discovered about yourself through the last 18 months of dealing with the COVID pandemic and your idea? Yeah, uh, I would say like the last 18 months have been um, certainly some of the most important uh, in my entire life um, and have been a really incredible time of introspection and, and some true grounding for me. Um, and so the word that I always think of um, is like gratitude. Um, I have really learned um, how to be grateful for the time that I have and the, the opportunities that I have um, and the life that I live. Um, and that is certainly um, not something that I, that I take for granted. So gratitude is definitely what I'm taking away from this experience. Well, we have very, a lot of gratitude for you. I want you to know that. So Shane, what about you? What do you see for the future of this organization in the next few years? And what, what is the, where are you landing um, going through this period of COVID as a, as a human being? I think for NLC Vermont, I, I really hope and am striving to make sure that, you know, Lou Leaders Council Vermont continues to be that beacon of holding up non-traditional leadership as not only needed, but absolutely necessary towards the building the fabric of a community and to allow all voices to be heard and not just those either with the most money or the most clout, but really making sure that solutions are based in the community and that folks that have the capacity and the ability are able to step up into leadership roles while breaking down barriers to make sure that everybody can. And I see this every year with the fellows and their ideas that come in. And it's, it, it, it's really inspiring to know that there's a couple cohorts that are out there like actively hammering away at it. And as this grows, it's only gonna get louder and the, the noise is only gonna get more as uh, people continue to move forward. And you know, with the pandemic, I think it's really only driven this point home that 
our solutions are based right here in our community. And yes, there are absolutely important conversations to have nationally and internationally. And there are really big issues at hand here. But if I've seen anything through COVID and being as lucky as I am to be in the position I still am, to see that the community is needed more than ever. And if our most vulnerable are left to hang out to dry, we all are left to hang out to dry. And I really hope to continue to not only hold that, but embrace that in my life in NLC and, and beyond as well. Well, we've come to the end of my program. And I just want to tell you that, you know, there's times um, where I have felt deep despair about, um, you know, the state of our world. And it's moments like this where I'm just like, you know what? We're going to be okay because of people like you. And so for that, I want to thank you, Elise Greaves and Shane Rogers, who are the co-directors of New Leaders Council Vermont. I encourage everyone to go to the website at newleaderscouncil.org and learn about this organization. And to the two of you, thank you. Thank you for your leadership. And, I, and I'm so excited to see, um, to see what happens next. And we'll get you back on the show again uh, in a year or so, so you can tell us how things are going. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you, Melinda. Thank you. Bye-bye.